left hand column, the HOTS column of new virtual student Cameron C notes is empty and ready to be filled in. As a virtual student, Cameron needs to build in a lot of repetition and reflection with his work, and the HOTS column is a prime opportunity to take care of both. The left-hand column is used to really engage Cameron's higher-order thinking skills, which is where we get that HOTS acronym. The left-hand column is used for a student to reflect on what they have learned, and then, pretending they are the teacher, to write down some complex questions based on their quick notes. For instance, if Cameron had scribbled down some facts on the First Amendment in the Quick Notes column on the right, he could then ask a corresponding complex question about the First Amendment in the HOTS column on the left, directly parallel to the basic info on the right. So what exactly is a complex question or a HOTS question? Think of it this way. HOTS questions are ones that you might find on a test and cannot be answered in a single sentence. If you can answer the question in a single sentence, then you know that your question wasn't really a HOTS question. Luckily, we can offer both you and Cameron a step-by-step -step process in the construction of a HOTS question. First, think of a really simple question, something that you probably could have answered in kindergarten. An easy way to make it would be to start with one of the W's, who, what, when, or where. So if Cameron is taking a history class, his first step might be to come up with a simple question, who was the first president? Second, Cameron needs to pick a verb to replace one of those W's. He needs a HOTS verb, something that will change his question into something that can't be answered simply. There are a ton of HOTS verbs out there, and Cameron's teachers can help him pick some that work best for his subject. For his history question, he could pick verbs like infer, speculate, judge, defend, criticize, or compare and contrast. Cameron decides to use infer. Third, now that Cameron has picked his hot verb, he needs to really understand what that verb means. He doesn't need to guess or just kinda know. He needs to know for sure. He can use a dictionary or he can send a quick message to his teacher. He finds out that infer means to form an opinion based on evidence. Fourth, Cameron needs to perform a simple switch. He needs to take out the simple verb in his question and replace it with the HOTS verb he chose. So, who was the first president becomes infer was the first president. Which doesn't make sense, does it? That's okay. It reminds us that Cameron has one final step in making a HOTS question. He can't just throw a HOTS verb at the front of a simple question and magically make it a HOTS question. He and we have to do one more thing. The fifth and final step in making a HOTS question is to rework the grammar of Cameron's question and add some detail. Cameron can do that by adding in the answer to his simple question into the body of his HOTS question. His simple question was, who was the first president? The answer he knows is obviously George Washington, so he's going to add that detail to his question. He looks at his quick notes and sees that Washington was unanimously elected by the Electoral College, so he's going to add that detail as well. Combined with his HOTS verb, infer, he gets a new, detailed, complex question. Infer the reasons behind the unanimous Electoral College election of George Washington as the first president. Just like that, Cameron has a HOTS question. Did it take him time to construct? Absolutely. It also made him interact with his notes and reflect on what he had learned. Two or three HOTS questions per C note can have a great impact on Cameron's learning. Now, one final section remains, the summary, which we'll tackle with Cameron in the last video in this series.